Hi everybody, my name is Stacy. I am the creator and the mad woman behind Ramblings of an Undiagnosed Mad Woman. So if you're at my blog and this is how you found the video, thank you for visiting. If you're not, go check it out, please, please, please. Anyway, this is my third blog. Um, I promise once I get a few more under my belt, I will stop the countdown. Today's topic is going to be about NaNoWriMo. Yes, I have been actively participating in NaNoWriMo. It's my jump in to try to get my book completed. So what I've been talking about lately is this binder that I've been making. And really, I just want to explain to you how I'm getting organized. Because I realized, you know, while I'd love for a book to just write itself, that isn't always going to happen. You have to get organized so you can remember important details that you might have otherwise forgotten while you're on page 100. So that's what I did. I got organized. And I created this wonderful binder. I even went out and bought a special one so it's nice and pretty. But this binder has become invaluable to me. It has been able to keep me on task. And I've been documenting how many words I'm writing and have done every day. Um, as of right now, I am at roughly 15,000 to 16,000 words, which is close to about a third of the way done to the goal for NaNoWriMo. Um, I've been doing really well. I've got the, the beginning story flushed out. Um, I'm working on the middle section right now. These are the scenes that you need to be careful with because every scene has to make a difference as to why the book goes where it is. It'll, it'll directly influence the ending. You don't want to show your characters going to the mall if it doesn't, you know, have anything to do with, you know, so-and-so, you know, winning the lottery at the end. It just, it doesn't make any sense. So anyway, I'm going to show you my binder, and I'm going to show you how I have it organized. Now, first off, when you open to the first page, you're going to see these nice, handy-dandy page separators. Now, my daughter was admiring my binder this morning, and I tried to explain to her how I was using it, and she's like, oh, that's great. I love your page separators. They're so much better than the ones I have in my binder. But the whole point of it was I really wanted to show her that I'm staying organized so I can stay on task. So in it, you see my daily breakdown. This is, this is the meat of my binder. This keeps me understanding on day one I wrote the prologue, and this is what happened during the prologue. You can actually kind of see it on the different days. It also has, you know, kind of a starred list to show that prologue is from so-and-so's perspective. I am switching back and forth to perspective, so I have to keep that straight so I know which way I'm going, and a, a fast run me down. For instance, in the prologue, my main character, Ellie, it's from her perspective, and this is the opening sequence. This is where she's taking off and she's running away and she just, you know, has had enough. So it's, it's to grab your attention and say, oh, I wonder why she's doing that. But each day it goes, all right, so November 1st we started. My character that was introduced was my main character, Ellie. And she mentions her husband, which his name is Ben. Um, unfortunately, when I started, I named him Kelvin, and then I realized I really just didn't like the name, so I changed it. And I finished with 1,455 words. Not too bad for day one, but you can see I've documented each day. Each day is getting a little bit more specific, probably because there's more stuff being added. But I'm keeping track, and I'm staying organized, which means that when I need to look back and say, oh, I wonder what I said about so-and-so, in chapter 1, when I'm on chapter 15, I'll be able to reference it. The second is a very important thing. Don't mind the drawings. I am not an artist. Artist with words, not with pencils and pens and stuff like that. These are my character profiles. Now, every character has to have a certain reason. So I am doing kind of a bubble thing, which means that the main character, Ellie, and how she relates to every single person around. For instance, married to Boyd, or Ben Boyd, you know, their daughter Melanie, her mom is going to be on there. This keeps track on how every character relates to each other. And then, of course, they all have their individual pages. This is where I'm going to describe that Ellie has long, dark hair, or, you know, she's got a slender build, Stuff like that that you might forget because you don't want to make your character skinny and slender in the first chapter and then, you know, ten chapters away say she's plump or she's pregnant and nine months pregnant. 
you have to make sure that all your characters are in line with each other. So you want to you want to do a character page, so you know what your characters are, so you can get that mental image. And also, it helps when you're describing them because you want to make sure that you got their personality traits down and their personality quirks. Do that for every main character. It'll be invaluable in the end, and it will really keep you on track. My third section is my ideas and brainstorming. One of the hardest things about writing this book is coming up with ideas. Now, I had the idea. I knew what I was going to do. I'm, it's, it's a book about a couple who is having issues in their relationship. So throughout the, the book, you have to figure out what leads up to these issues, but you also want to show it. So this is going to be the meat of the book. You're going to have activities that lead to the ultimate conclusion. Well, if you don't know where it's going, how do you expect your readers to find out where it's going? So I've done a lot of brainstorming. My husband has helped me out immensely with this, with this portion of the project. I've talked to him about my characters, almost as if I'm talking about the next door neighbor and we're just gossiping. And I'm going, oh, you know, Ellie and, and Ben, you know, they did this and they did that. And what if they did this? What would happen if they did that? Every action has a consequence. However, you're the one that has to make up that action and find out what the consequence is. Now, I'm not going to tell you much about my book because I want it to be a surprise. And if I tell you the whole story, you're not going to want to read it at the end because you already know. But basically, I know the beginning. I know the end. I now have to come up with the middle portion. And this is where the ideas and the brainstorming come in handy is because this is where everything is cooking up. Now, all I have to do once I get the idea is write it down into a scene. So overall, I am having so much fun doing NaNoWriMo. I am so excited to, do be, to be doing this project with so many other writers. Granted, you know, it is cutting back on, you know, time that we interact with each other. But for the most part, I mean, how wonderful. I mean, there's a handful of us writers that are doing this together. And we push each other every day. How many words did you get? How many, how many words? How are your characters developing? How do you write dialogue? This has been an incredible journey, and I've been trying to write a book for years upon years. In fact, this idea is an idea that I've had floating in my head for probably about five years now. And now I'm going to do it, and I've got 30 days. And, you know, part of me is doing this blog and saying, hey, push me, push me, push me. I have to reach 50,000 words by the end of November. I don't even know what you win if you do, but... It qualifies you as a Nano Remo winner if you hit 50,000 words. And frankly, I'm going to do it. And so far, I'm a third of the way there. So for all those other writers out there that are doing Nano Remo, I wish you the best of luck. And I look forward to supporting you. If you want to find me as a buddy on there, uh, search for BarberGirl28. I will put the information down below. Otherwise, it's time for me to say goodbye because I've got some writing to do. Later. <laughs>